to episode 305 of Flow Wrestling Radio Live. I'm your host, Christian Piles. Joined today, I will eventually be joined today by my mainest man, Willie Saylor. He's um, waiting patiently for his turn in line, but he is currently behind 2012 Olympic bronze medalist, the current head coach, North Carolina Tar Heels, Coleman Scott. Coach Scott joining us from vacation on the beach. Coach, how's it going today in uh, Outer Banks? It's going great. It's going great. How are you guys doing? We're doing great. We're great. we're pumped to have you on. Um, thanks for taking some time out of your out of your vacay with to talk a little wrestling, talk a little recruiting with us. Um, obviously, it's a it's a it's a pleasure for us. Wanted to start kind of higher level, talking about your um, your three years down at, at UNC as the head coach there. What have you learned, and what's been your experience? Um, those first three years and how have you taken that experience and are you going to apply it down, down the line? Uh, I mean, uh, we're always learning, you know, if, if, we're, if we're not keeping our, our eyes open and, and, you know, ready to learn every, every sort of minute of the day, then, then, you know, we're not going to evolve, but you know, it's been, it's been a tough three years and, and building and, uh, you know, getting these guys to really, really believe in the system that, that, that we were implementing. And, uh, you know, like I said, they were learning, I was learning and, um, you know, but I feel like we're, we're in the right direction and, and we're making headway every day and, you know, to be better and better and keep pushing, you know, uh, you know, the, of course the goal is to, to always at the end of the year to just keep placing higher and higher. Yeah. So you got a guy in, in Troy Heilman who graduated this year as, is, is it, how helpful is it to have a guy like that who f- frankly was, was just an average guy by, by results for him to come in and, you know, he's an NCAA semifinalist. He's an all American for you guys. How helpful is it to be able to point to this guy? It's like, hey, this is a guy that bought in, and, and look what he was able to do from a pretty humble start. Yeah, you know, I mean, he, he was. We always saw that that potential that he had, and, and, and really because of the effort and the the work level that he always put in. So um, for us, we, we we you know sort of knew that he could have that or he could be that um, if he just you know kept doing what he was doing and. and and uh, it was just about, you know, sort of zoning in. And, and you know, he started, I think, 0-8 or 0-9 his junior year and uh, came on strong second half of the year, um, you know. But but it was almost too much, you know, too late and or too little too late. And, yeah. and then he, he just n- didn't didn't keep his foot off the gas pedal, didn't get discouraged and had a great summer at uh, universities that in between his junior senior year. And that really propelled him to believe that he can compete with the best guys in the country. And uh, he beat a couple All-Americans there. And, and once that happened... Uh, it was a snowball effect. He just he just truly believed that that he could be the best, and and you know the, it, it showed at the end of the it showed all year really. You know he had a great great season. Um, you know and you know he was top four or five for the majority of the year, uh, probably after Vegas. I would say yeah. is, is really when he came on, and and people really believed that that he was that good. Yeah, yeah, excellent year and excellent finish to his career. Um, have a question about you know you're an Oklahoma State alum. The the John Smith, Oklahoma State coaching tree. You, Coach Papalizio, Branch, Arisman, uh, Coach Kyle, Pendleton, Jamil, Obi, Kevin Ward, Teague Moore. You got all these guys. What does it say maybe about well, – I have. it's kind of a two-pronged question because, one, why do you think so many Oklahoma State guys are going on and having success at, at the coaching level? I guess is, is my first question. What is it about that room, that environment, that kind of breeds high-level coaches? Um, I, I don't know. I think, I, I think a lot of us want to be coaches, you know, when we go there anyway. And, and, um, you know, I mean, you learn a system that that's proven to be, you know, in essence, the, the best college team in, in all sports. Uh, you know, if you look at the, the number of national titles they won and, and it just, you, you, you just learn if. Uh Oh, lost Coleman there for a second. Really learn. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and, and when you do that, you know, you just, you just sort of take it all in and, and, you know, make sure that you implement what you want to implement and, um, learning from a guy like John is, is unbelievable. And, you know, I was under John and branch while I was there and Pat Smith and, uh, you know, it's really, really just, you know, I know I'd be where I'm at at this age. I didn't believe that. I didn't know that, but, you know, I paid attention to what they did and, and how they did it. And, uh, they run a top notch program and that's all, you know, I was, it was just blessed to be there. Gotcha. So um, the reason I, I was really excited to have you on to, um, to talk about recruiting, you have a, a, an interesting philosophy, and it may be rare, may not be a, a rare philosophy in recruiting, but 
We, we had a conversation, um, you know, after the Kirkfleet, and I know you can't talk about the, the, spe the specifics there, but um, the notion of recruiting a wrestler that is already verbally committed, and you, you think it's something that, that you should not do. Could you explain how you kind of uh, arrived at that philosophy or arrived at that, at that perspective on recruiting? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I just, I think that you should leave in. No, um, I, I was raised by my dad. If I, if I made the commitment, then I was going to keep the commitment um, type of deal. But, you know, it is evolving, you know, and I understand that what you were saying. You know, the, the footballs of, the, you know, all the football coaches, you got to recruit, you know, no matter what. Um, and, and, and that's sort of translating over into, into wrestling, you know. Um, you know, so, I, I mean, I just, I just believe that, that, whatever you believe in, you better stick, you know, you should stick to it and, and don't waver from that, you know, cause, cause down the road, you know, someone's going to call you out on it per se. Um, you know, I, I think, you know, I've had kids call me that, that are committed or text me. And uh, first thing I said, Oh, you know, what? You, you need to call whoever you're committed to. Text with me. I, I need to see it prior. Hey, coach. Coach, um, you're for whatever I reason. Hey, coach, yeah. for whatever reason, you're you're breaking up really bad. I don't know what's going on. It was, of course, before the show, everything was working fine, and now once you get going, for for whatever reason, it wasn't working. So I, we weren't catching much of what you're saying. We'll keep trying, but if it can't do it, we might have to do this another time or figure out a different solution. You got? Is it better now? Yeah, I hear it sounds good right now. So I caught okay. a lot of what you were saying. Understood that you're like. If a kid, and that was going to be one of my questions, actually. You mentioned, hey, if what if a kid that's already verbal reaches out, what do you do? So you'll say, hey, you need to let whoever you're committed to know, and then we can talk. Yeah, let, let them know, and, and I want to see that, you know, if you are decommitting, that it, that it needs to happen, not not all talk, you know. And and that that's, you know, for, for my sake and your sake, you know, I mean, it's – I don't want to sit here and, and, and waste time uh, knowing that, that you're, in essence, going somewhere else, you know, that doesn't. Gotcha. Well, coach, um, I hate oh, it gets people. You know. Yeah, I, I don't know what's happening, but I hate to cut this short, but we got to do this again some other time. For whatever reason, I'm getting a couple words and it's and it's not working. Um, so that really stinks. I'm really sorry. I don't know what's what's going on. Um, maybe we'll try get you on the phone another time where we can we know it's secure and it's going to work because for whatever reason. The, the fates are lined. They don't want us to have this conversation. But I, I really want to have it, and I, I can't even hear what you're saying right now. But appreciate you coming on, and I hope we can figure this out down the line because this uh, definitely stinks. But we're kind of at the mercy of technology a little bit. So thanks to Coach Scott. Sorry that that happened. That really stinks because we're kind of just getting into the, to the good stuff there and yeah. freaking technology. So I think the saltwater is connection. Yeah, it could be it could be the salt water. Um, that, that's what I'm going with. We've got to, we, but we need to work to make that happen uh, down the line. So sorry to Coach Scott, sorry to you guys that wanted to hear that because I think that would have been really cool. And maybe we need to figure out a different solution for for Skype calls, yeah. right? Maybe just get people on the phone, simplify. Fewer variables, the better we found. So we'll try to get Willie on. We'll see if that works remotely from uh, Easton, Pennsylvania. But <laughs> some thoughts uh, as we transition. So um, the first thing, and, and again, it was, it was unfortunate that um, Co Coach Scott was was cutting out there, but um, I, I'm glad that he brought that up. You know, cr when Christian first got in here this morning, that was the first thing we talked about, and I imagine he said the same conversation with Bracky about, all right, well, there's going to be kids who are going to reach out who are already committed, yeah. um, and that's kind of something I wanted to talk about. Um, getting back to to the Kirkfleet situation for a second, we, we kind of never got into the specifics of, of what happened there. Um, and, and the, the family reached out to, to, to Calum and Penn state. Um, so based, based on our discussion there in the previous episode, you might've kind of been intimating that, but it, it was more of a broad based discussion. It wasn't really anything specific about Kirkfleet. So just kind of wanted to, to clarify that. Um, but yeah, I'm glad that he mentioned like, um, his personal philosophy on, on, Hey, you you should go check with your with your other coach um, before we kind of go any further with this. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, okay, so maybe we can uh, maybe Thursday work to get. Well, I don't want to bother him again on vacation. We'll get Coleman on another time. We'll make it work. 
Um, <laughs> they work. They work hard enough as it is, right? These D one yeah, coaches. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I. <laughs> well, I invited him on. He said, "Sure, no problem." And then he mentioned he's at the beach. I was like, "Coach, you don't have to come on on vacation. <laughs> yeah. Really, it would be fine to wait." But um, yeah, maybe Kyle. Kyle's gonna Skype in Willie here while we're waiting. So. Get you guys up to speed in case you've been somewhat under a rock, although I know it's summer and, you know, your attention may be elsewhere. The Yasser Dogu was last week. Team USA sent the full, or all our number ones to Turkey to compete in what's one of the toughest international tournaments in the world basically every year. You know, you've got Uregan, you've got uh, a lot of other tournaments that are pretty tough, but Yasser Dogu has been, I mean, that's where... Jordan Burroughs took his first international loss yep. to an American now, Nick Marable. Um, but so it's been a pretty tough tournament historically, and we sent our full team this year as we are now joined by Willie. I'm not sure if he can be heard yet, but I can at least see him. He's looking good. What's up, Willie? What's up, bud? Not much. Hey, welcome. I'm. Uh, we hey. Had, we had some technical difficulties with Coleman. I'm kind of bummed. Yeah, not te- technical difficulties here. East End greater than Outer Banks. <laughs> May, in internet only, perhaps in, in just internet, they can make that claim. I'll and, tell you what, no man, salt water ain't eating my connection. Yeah, there's no <laughs> danger of salt water in uh in Easton. So okay, let's key it up. Let's get right to it. Jordan Burroughs lost. He lost to Frank Chimizo. Uh It's like what his fourth loss ever, fourth or fifth loss of of his entire career, and. Off of this one match, there are like probably 10, 15 different storylines that that came from it. Because it, the match itself was crazy. The officiating was at times poor. The challenges were mind blowing, both of them. Both, both, both coachings, they need to lose their cue privileges because they were two absolutely terrible challenges. And then you've got this. Chimizo in New York, training at the New York RTC, New York City RTC angle. And with that, we've got basically a show's worth of topics from this stuff. So want to start with the match itself, because I think that's probably the most interesting thing of all. Yes. And it starts with, and I don't want to give the full rundown play by play, 15 seconds, beautiful, kind of a reattack from Jordan, gets in deep on the single, backside double, doesn't get the necessary supporting points out and drives him out of bounds, okay? 15 seconds in, they go out of bounds. One is given to Jordan, and he asks for the cube, and, and Manning or Manning kind of gestures at the cube. Jordan asks for it, and they throw it, okay? And for, for a number of reasons, I was in the moment. This was not revisionist history. This wasn't Monday morning quarterbacking. In the moment when the brick was thrown, I said, this is a mistake. You should not throw mm-hmm. this brick. One, it was one point. I didn't see clear takedown criteria. The fact that it was that close, and you're in Turkey right now, with UWW officials, that's re- reason enough not to throw it. Two, well, it's 15 seconds in, and you risk not having the brick for a later issue when you may really, really, really need the brick when the match is on the line, like reared itself perfectly when they gave Chimizo four on the edge down the line. So yeah. I guess the the initial thoughts on, on that challenge, or did I just summarize it perfectly? <laughs> you, you summarized it perfectly. Uh, one, I didn't think it was really close to a two two you're right 15 seconds in you lose it for the whole match i think there is a third prong of it too in that if if this is i don't know if this is a match that's supposed to be four two maybe but look you know this is going to be eight six and there's going to be squirrely positions and you know there's going to be high scoring and you're going to it's not worth it at one point, especially when the one point is for an extra point for you as opposed to, like, losing point. It's just 15 seconds in, I, it didn't make a whole you, lot of you sense. You literally can know. give the lead away. I mean, you score yeah, the yeah. only point of the match. I mean, it's 15 seconds in, for crying out loud. And it's like, I'm willing to be losing right now. Mm-hmm. I just I just didn't understand it. Jordan, especially it, Jordan is a smarter wrestler as we've ever seen, so that's what made it... I, I don't know. There, there needs to be... <laughs> we need to make another sure. Angle, Go ahead. Uh, yeah, uh, another angle too is why you wouldn't want to challenge there is the whistle blows, Jordan scores. Okay, now you're going to give him a timeout, right? I mean, yeah. Jordan, he just scored. Yeah, yeah, I know. It was pretty clear. He's, uh, I mean, it's 15 seconds in. There's, you can't make many judgments, right? So Jordan was uh, generating the majority of the offense. 
finishing, as always with Chimizo, is difficult, and especially when everything gets funneled to a single leg with Chimizo. I mean, Jordan hit him square at least two times with a double leg, and Chimizo just pops that left hip and puts you on that single uh, on his left leg, and that's where he is so freaking tough. It's incredible and, how he's able to fend that double off and force him to go say, to a single. His hip power, I mean, just power in general, but his hip power is just out. It's it's insane. And, you know, Jordan Oliver actually said it when they wrestled at Beat the Streets. He's like, first double, he kind of – he didn't really go through his hips. It was so low. He kind of was right at the knees, and he just kind of crumbled. He said the second one on Twitter is, is literally like he hit a wall, right? And that's something you, like, kind of hear sometimes. But, like, we've seen two powerful double-leggers just, like, <laughs> stopped in their tracks on this. So ch- all credit to Chimizo for, for his defense. But – we saw Jordan was able to finish on a number of occasions, um, you know, but at the end or where, right when he's transitioning his offense, Chimizo's on the attack. Chimizo got a reversal um, off kind of like a cross body position, and then he gets ultimately that four off of a takedown from Jordan. And this was the position, and I wish we could pull up and show you the film. If you haven't seen it, check um, my Twitter. I tweeted a video with pretty decent footage of of the exchange where he comes up after getting the two Jordan ends up in a double like a standard double leg position kind of driving in and Chimizo does one of those funky exchanges and ends up on top out of bounds and they give four and there's nothing Jordan Burroughs can do about it yeah the the goofy thing to me is that I thought Jordan kind of owned him on his feet to be honest I mean Chimizo's Chimizo's points and 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 the positions that he threatened in were like defensive positions, almost like, man, next time when Jordan gets takedowns, maybe he just bails and leaves them up. <laughs> well, that's what I mean, that's what I suggested on Twitter. It's like almost like a folk style situation where you get your two and you just cut them. And I don't even know what the rule ramifications yeah, of that can't would be. Actually, cut them, but yeah, you kind of chill. Yeah, but I, yeah, okay, right. You can't cut them, but like, yeah, chill out, bail, or like just. <sighs> I don't know. I don't know if it's that simple because Chimiz- it's not as simple as just laying on him because that's not what he allow. He doesn't allow Chimiz- you to do that. He'll like reach back and do some funky yeah, stuff. Yeah, you can't I mean, just say chill. And, and right, that that's even the thing. on that situation, the situation that determined the match. Jordan's in on like a low shot, almost like a, a an ankle lace, and Chimizo's on like two toes and and post it out and somehow turns that into a situation where he ends up with a four yeah yeah i mean there's you've got to be so delicate there it's almost um dylan nessish mm-hmm. it's like oh, yeah. all right just gotta clear out get big i don't know what you do but you've just got to be so i mean we Maybe, saw uh thomas gilman face mush yeah <laughs> you gotta come out front and, and face mush yeah. him. so that's the, that's the thing right though it's so a this match even more so than beat the streets we saw what has the potential to make this match so special because of of the the differing styles and how good they both are at the style and it's so hard to criticize or, or comment on like jb tactically one because he is probably the highest mad iq right that mm-hmm. we can think of and b you know we're we're not in those positions right because you know, tactically and what they've scouted, maybe they were like, okay, we got to put the pressure on here and, and put some points up. But in doing so, he exposed himself in ways that maybe he wasn't expecting. Um, and then obviously the four, I mean, the four, I don't think any of us think it was a four, but right, that sometimes that's going to happen in, in international. So it's just, it's just really weird to, um, it's just a very odd match to comment on. And as much as I think like the those scrambles are going to happen again, what you're talking about where he, Chimizo makes it very hard to just kind of chill out on top. Um, the, the the next time they wrestle is still going to be goofy like that again. Well, here's – and I'll, I'll push back a little, Willie, of, of your perspective that it, it was, you know, he's so counter. The guy took two leg attack takedowns and took Jordan down, no question about it. He hit a beautiful street, sweep. Too. He had a beautiful sweep single, but I'm talking off his own leg attack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Beautiful sweep single. His stuff at, at Beat the Streets was primarily counter. At, here at Yasser Dogu, he hit the sweep and he hit a beautiful high crotch when it was 8-8 and, <laughs> and finished and nearly and, and I didn't realize this until it was kind of brought to my attention I watched that high crotch that he finishes in body lock he was 
it was close to four there. That was very, very close to Jordan landing in danger, if not. Um, so I, I think we can't just marginalize, not that you, I'm saying you were, but man, there's four points. Four of his 10 points were off leg attack takedowns. There was a, a, a fake four that he got. There was a fake point that he got off of, uh, off of the challenge. But hey man, a lot of his offense, he, he got leg well, attacks. It was, and, never, it was never eight, eight. Um, yeah. Because it, no, it, it was had, something that had to have been. It was eight. something to six. It was or, eight eight. It was definitely eight eight. It was eight eight, and then he got that high crotch to make, make it, it 10, ten eight. And then Jordan got two, two step. Ones, he yeah. got a one off a uh, fleeing the hole, and then one off a step out mm -hmm. uh, that made it ten ten. I thought that I thought the four made it ten. No, no, no four made it eight eight. Four made it eight eight. So, oh yes, yes. So and really, that's, that's the thing, right? Is um. Like freestyle wrestling, and I know American fans complain about all the vagaries of the rules, or whatever. But like that's just gonna happen sometimes. Like you're you're gonna be in a position, and you're gonna land awkwardly, or not how you necessarily want to land. And um, whether that four was called or not, like when you have that many points in match and you have that many scrambles, weird stuff is gonna happen, and it can happen against Chimizo just as much as it can happen against Burroughs when you have two guys that are that good. So um, it's just like. Those matches are always going to be in the margins. I, I, I think it's 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 going to be really hard for Jordan or Chimizo to open up a, a four six eight point lead if they so, wrestle again. I uh, I am of the mind, and I tweeted this, and and it goes against what I normally think. When people say a loss might be a good thing, or um, you know what we what we saw was was okay it's the best thing for the situation I, I said it might be the best thing for Jordan um, the way the match played out and despite who won or lost or got their hand raised it might be the best thing for Jordan now uh, the best omen would have been if Jordan tacked him <laughs> right <laughs> I mean that's that's the truth but seeing the way the match played out and seeing who did what in what situations um, ultimately what this is about is do we feel we feel better worse optimistic pessimistic how do we feel about the prospects of them meeting that world well i said i said right after you know i felt he widened the gap and lost i thought if you compare the skill i thought he looked better and i thought i saw the adjustments on jordan's end in terms of he was much safer with his finishes on his single leg he was much more efficient there um even though he kind of got he got reversed once, and then he had the weird four thing, which I don't really I don't really count that as a finishing issue because he got the finish. It was just like this transitional yeah, he issue. He got the takedown. He got the takedown. It was yeah. just like this this weird thing that really only Chimizo puts you in. So now I think Jordan's going to say, okay, right here I'm getting takedowns, and then he scored five points immediately after I got takedowns. Like not yeah. not like I got up and got a takedown. It's like. I'm transitioning, so five points right there. That's Jordan's gonna be able to count. That's not sustainable. What is sustainable is Jordan Burroughs got to legs. I we should go back and count how many times he got to his lock. Chimizo got to a lock twice. He got to a lock. I don't know, probably five or six times, right? So I feel great about Jordan moving forward. I think he's better. I thought, you know, there were mistakes. I mean. You would never. I, I mean, at the World Championships, I I just have to firmly believe there's no way they make a a, a mistake with a brick like that. I just think there's no way. I just think they got caught up in the moment, um, and you know it would never happen again, right? So I, I feel great about it going into Worlds, and um, it it was an awesome match. And I hate that the officiating issues kind of um, reared their reared its head, but b by and large, I thought it was an awesome <clears throat> bout. I think that's a great. I think that's a great phrase. Widen the gap and lost. I, I agree completely. I mean, I felt like Jordan did what he needed to do. I, I felt like, you know, I, I felt like it beat the streets under the conditions and the way the match played out. I mean, Jordan won sort of like a, you know, a coin flippish match. This, this time, I'm not, I'm not being an American homer here. I felt like Jordan was the better wrestler, and I'm not saying he shouldn't have got his hand, should or shouldn't have got his hand raised. Um, to me, uh, Yosra Dugu in July, uh, frankly, I don't care, <laughs> right? If it's going to happen, I'd rather have it at Dogu than World Championships. Um, but if we're handicapping who wins the next time, I feel like Jordan 
showed it, showed he was better. No, um, I was going to say the, one, one thing that, you know, we talk about the adjustments for Jordan, but when you, when you think back and look, what ha- a couple things happened that beat the streets. One, Chimizo got dog-tired exhausted he did not get tired this match at all he showed no signs of fatigue he got the winning takedown when he had to get it now he ran he calculatedly ran at the end because the rules allow you to run the last little bit there's no more caution in twos and basically if you're up two with 15 seconds ago you could probably run literally run the last little bit without the necessary punishment yeah and with criteria so heavily weighted towards the big move that he had and jordan didn't you can run so i you have to say one he didn't get tired one he didn't get tired two he generated his own offense at a much higher level so you got while i do think jordan wind the gap i think chimizo's improvements can't be ignored either sure sure do you guys i was thinking about this the other day and and um you know spay I've always been this way. Spay's always been this way. It's like, don't talk to me about criteria. Don't talk to me about overtime. But one thing, um, I, I, I like criteria. But one thing, I th- maybe criteria should just be cut and dry last point. I mean, if you go out and earn it, you earn it. I mean, if you, I don't know. I think it would lessen the running, too. I mean, because if you have a four and you're up, I mean, you can just run. Spay and I have had this conversation where there, there's two – to me, there's like two basic things that um, would help criteria. Number one, and I think this is like just the most obvious thing, put a gratuity point at the end, right? If, if you win by criteria, so it's 11-10 now, right? Chimizo has criteria, a, so it's now 11-10. You're saying leave a tip. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> 20% every time. Um, but then because then you don't have things like in box scores where you have 10-10 to 10 and you have to put like a star or a whatever next well, to it. Like just, just do for, that. But then the second part is um, – Right. Is it, it? Should it just be as simple as um, last point or highest move or whatever? Just like the the you know at all times what it is. You don't have to kind of get into to the to the vagaries of it. Well, my issue with with criteria is, is this: Why do we prioritize big score over more scores? And why do we prior yeah, right. Why do we prioritize last score over first score? To me. That maybe the ultimate in the not the, a caution doesn't occur in every match, but a caution is like as it is right now. Now that there's no more shot clock point cautions, which I think those shouldn't have been. That was a huge change. And that, but now cautions are given out basically for bad wrestling. If you're if you're evading action, if you're to me, that's what we should be rewarding. So there, I don't see what makes uh, two twos worse than a four. And I don't really right. see what, I don't really see the advantage. What, what makes it so much better to score late than early. Okay, I'm with you on the first point. I'm with you on the first point. If you have, if you have a four and I have two twos or I have a two and, and two a ones. one and a one, listen, why, why should the four, you, you, you're, I know what their theory is. Their theory is, oh, we, so we can encourage big throws. That ain't that ain't how it works. You don't like you don't get into a position. You don't get into a position and go. Well, if I go for it, well, if I go for it, I'll I'll have criteria, baby. Um, No, it's just the flow of the match. So why why should a four be worth more than three different scoring situations? I mean, this guy scored three different times, three different ways. This guy had one throw. I'm with you on that. But I'm not with you on the value of the last point because the last points literally, like, encourage the four, that's a myth. Encourage the last point because of action, that's a fact. You have to go for it. Yeah, I don't hate that as much as the the four versus two twos. Um, But, yeah, so. So what did you think about the call, Christian? A terrible call. I mean, it's not it's not four in in, yeah. in any world. It's not four. Um, four, right? And, and I, I don't I don't even think this was this isn't some this wasn't the Olympic corruption. This isn't Navruzov no. Gomez. It's just a bad call. And bad the call. the officials would have benefited from the brick getting thrown. I think they would have changed it to a two. It was it was a very obvious two. But what happens is I don't think the judge saw it, even though it was right in front of him. So the you know one guy throws up two, and it's just kind of like I, I don't know. I don't know. What, it was what, weird. It was like to the end of his table, so it would have been hard for him to even like see. Yeah, a lot of people are saying, "Well, you know, the video was fuzzy. You know, the the, the judge was right there, the chair was right there. 
he had the best angle. He didn't. I don't think he had the best angle. No, he didn't. He probably had to. Yeah. And he didn't move, so he didn't raise up to see it. <laughs> yeah, and uh, there's also the table right in the way. I don't know. It's just, to me, it, it wasn't for. He did not land in danger. You have to land in danger. He did not land in danger. He did not. No. That's uh, when land it's in for. Danger, land in danger. Just it. It isn't. From my understanding, it isn't even just exposure. It has to be. Your back has to hit the mat, or your 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 90. shoulders have to roll across the mat, right? And Jordan plants with that at least, at the very least, he plants with a hand. Yeah, Jordan with his belly up, pointed down. Jordan ends up on his butt, yes, kind of like this. But it was like it just it seemed so far after the action had ended that it would be like that is a crazy amount of continuation and uh, additionally that well that to me that act would be two and two then right right if you i mean get, if, if you want to get that yeah if you want to give them credit for that then right it would be two and two also i I'm, I'm frustrated with the continuation rules and how they're being called in international wrestling right now because i actually kind of liked how it was at the olympics 2016 basically anything on the edge there were it was like, hey, man, you're close to a two. It, they would throw up the two. You look at Jaden's takedown or not takedown. When he takes a guy out of bounds, they get to go caution to one. I was like, why would that not be continuation? If you haven't seen it, try to look it up because I think that was a perfect example of continuation not being given, whereas clearly with Chimizo and in other instances it is given. I don't think it's consistent. I think it, it, it lends itself to very nebulous officiating that is bad for wrestling. I want to get one one more thing on on the match because I know we 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 still got to talk about the the NYCRTC stuff, um, and I don't want to get an argument about this because this is basically just eye test at this point. So I disagree with the the widen the gap point, um, and I think I've always been kind of a little to the right of you guys as far as believing that Chimizo had a, a better chance chance against Burrows than, than maybe you guys gave him, um, and that this kind of showed what I've thought which is that Chimizo a little bit better you know physically right now Burrow still smarter and and, and grittier and um, I'm still gonna to back Burrows and, and pick Burrows for for Budapest but um, I, I think I don't I forget if I was talking to Mike Mal about this but this is kind of almost how I saw it playing out not like the way the matches played out but like there's no way Burrows gonna lose a beat the streets Chimizo's gonna get him in a goofy one in um you know, overseas, Dogu or wherever, and then they're going to meet in Budapest, and it's going to be, that's going to be the match. Like, that's going to be, you're going to, Burroughs is going to throw the kitchen sink in that match, and it's it's going to be one of the best versions of Burroughs we're ever going mean, to see, and it's going to be awesome. You can always, you can always say, um, I mean, Chimizo's world class, right? And, and he can always win, but from from what I saw, I'm always going to err on the side of the attacker. I'm always going to if I'm picking, I'm always going to pick the offensive guy. I I mean I pick I pick James Green every time against Dylan Ness, and Dylan Ness always got. I mean I'm always going to err on the side of the aggressive guy. Yeah, I can get with that. So after after the win. Um, it kind of was a continuation of a conversation that happened uh, around Beat the Streets. The idea that, you know, Frank Chimizo trains at the New York City RTC. Um, uh, Kendall Cross was wearing a Team Chimizo shirt at Beat the Streets. Um, you know, Jordan kind of made a, a roundabout comment about, um, you know, being upset about finding where people's allegiances were. It's, it's kind of known, at least to us, that Jordan – is not thrilled with the with the idea that Frank Chimizo trains in New York City. He's trained by, uh, you know, there's American coaches. That's a, a USA Wrestling RTC there. Um, that doesn't sit well with the Nebraska coaching staff. It doesn't sit well with 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 Jordan, as we're made to understand. I'm not trying to speak for Jordan here. That's my understanding of his perspective. That you know, and I, I've talked with Willie about this, and he's you know confirmed it, and we you know. That's how he feels, right? And so I ask a question, what percentage – because I'm genuinely curious. You know, we're saying, okay, he's trained in New York. Well, he's not in New York exclusively, right? How much time has he spent there? And then Andy Rovat says, what? That's an absurd question. And other people are like, don't make Andy, excuses. And I'm like – Andy needs to zip it. 
Yeah. Andy needs to zip it. He's always Andy. You're the smartest guy in the room. I, I go on Twitter and I troll. I go WWE style. I said I'm the smartest mind in wrestling. Andy legitimately believes that. Andy, zip it. You not only you don't know everything. And don't compare. Don't compare Andy. The situation. Oh, in Dagestan they all train together. That whoop de do. Congratulations. Uh, it's not to say it's not apples to apples. This isn't this isn't a bunch of people training in Dagestan. This isn't uh, Steven Micic wrestling for another team. This isn't David Havitt wrestling for another team. It's not Franklin Gomez wrestling for another team. Those guys lived in the United States for a long time. This is a, a, a wrestling benefactor setting this guy up and, and and paying for him to live and train. This is Kendall Cross, one of America's Olympic champions, wearing a team. Chimizo t-shirt. This isn't this isn't Franklin Gomez wrestling for Puerto Rico. Yeah. I and, mean, re rethink this, Andy. And it's really well, nuanced, right? I mean, it's not it's not I don't think this can be like just a a black and white good bad thing, right? Like there's there's so many different angles to it and so many different perspectives and like when when I give my perspective, I'm just like it's pretty obvious, folks. Like I'm coming at it from a media perspective, but like if Jordan as an athlete and and the coaching staff like if they have a problem with it and they're the ones that actually go and have to go up and beat this guy, like, yeah, it makes a lot more sense for them to take an issue with it than for me to not as much take issue with so it. I t I t so my perspective is a little different from yours, Willie, because you feel like Gomez, Habit, Michich, Novachkov back in the day, um, th since those guys, they lived in America, they, um, you know, you said to me yesterday on the phone, they kind of did their contribution to American wrestling through NCAAs through living here they've kind of done that time I think I think the reason we take more issue with Chimizo than those I think that is a distinction for sure but I think the notion of, of a as, as a threat right and now that first of yeah. all first of all one USA when Franklin Gomez was world silver, USA Wrestling was so far from winning a world title then. It wasn't even like we weren't counting points. Our 60s weren't that great. They were maybe on par with Franklin, but they weren't getting it done at that level at that point. And we weren't like, wow, Franklin Gomez is is being funded by U.S. dollars and training here, and he's hurting uh, our, our chances. And, you know, the same with Habit. We don't view him as a threat to Zane. Um, Novotchkov, yeah, he was good. He had his runs. You know, he beat his gar off. He had some deep runs. But even then, we were like, you know, he was losing to Americans. So it was the notion. He didn't beat Americans. He didn't beat Americans. So there, was, there wasn't a notion of a threat, and he wasn't a threat to our best guy. Yeah, Frank, yeah, Frank Chimi sure. Hold on. Frank Chimizo is taking points away from USA Wrestling, potentially. They did. Yep. It 100% did last year when Chimizo beat James Green in the World Finals, right? This is a guy that beat a, an American in the World Finals who is beating our best wrestler in years right now. He's a threat, and there's American support behind this guy. I think it's different. He is a threat. He is a threat to our best wrestler. He's a threat to our point-scoring potential. And for that reason, I think more so than, well, Habit is an American, is why we're kind of raising our necks. And I don't think it's necessarily hypocritical either that we're now saying, hold on, this is a little different, right? Uh, yeah. Is there some is there some hypocrisy in, in the fact that um, Chimizo is is much more a threat and much better, let's be honest, much better than David Habit and, and, and Boris Novotchkov. I mean, is there is there some hypocrisy there? Maybe, maybe... That's our knee-jerk reaction. We're more, um, we're more vocal about it because uh, Chamizo is just frankly better. But the situations uh, like that that Andy's talking about—they're not apples and oranges. They're, they're not apples and oranges. This isn't a guy. Chamizo isn't a guy that grew up in the United States or, or even moved here. Franco Gomez, uh, Novotkov moved here when he was 14. Um, and spent time. This is a, a proper equivalent, and, and he brings up Agul training with Snyder. Uh, it, it's not. This is not a weak training camp. I, this is not apples and oranges. We're talking about a guy. The equivalent, the proper equivalent to this would be, um, what if a, a, a rich, the guy that has Al Rosa, uh, diamond mind, right? That would be the equivalent of setting up Jordan Burroughs in Russia 
to train to beat Sargush. Right? Yeah. How would you like that? How would Russia like that? That's the proper equivalent. Not um, not Agul coming over here for a week camp. And let's be honest. I mean, what, uh, what Chimizo defects. From, he's a he's an all star. He defects from Cuba. He marries somebody in Italy and moves there so that uh, he he's sponsored by the Italians and gets a better life in Italy. Then he gets divorced. Then he then he goes to Dagestan. He's set up in Russia. Uh, New York City. I mean, let's not pretend. It's yeah. not the same situation. Yeah, it's definitely a different situation. And t- part of me is a little, I empathize somewhat with Chimizo in that, well, the guy's Italian, right? Where is he supposed to train? Like, there's, there's, he does need to practice wrestling somewhere. There's certainly no one. And we could say, not our problem, Frank. Okay, yeah, we could say that. But at the well, same time, should've... it's like he's got it. He will train somewhere, and I don't I don't blame him. I blame maybe our system for allowing him here. I don't, also... blame, I don't blame Frank Chimizo for anything. Yeah. I mean, the guy the guy left Cuba, which is a good, uh, a good training environment, probably not the best life, but they have a better system probably than Italy and better guys in the room to train with in Italy, right? So he's making improvements. He's making a better life for himself. He's making better situations for himself. But, I mean, the bottom line comes down, I don't blame Frank Chimiza for taking the money and living in New York City and having a good life. What I'm saying is, is it proper for the United States to help another guy out? Like I said, they're not they're not setting up a beautiful place in Moscow for uh, David Taylor to train. They're not setting up a beautiful place, you know, somewhere for Kyle Snyder to train and beat Sedgelayev. That's about Russian Russian money ain't funding that. There's also like, man, I don't know how much this factors in, but like Chimizo clearly, clearly wants to be a star and an international icon <clears throat> and all these things and. Um, again, whether like that, I don't know if that that factors into like the right or wrong, but like he probably wanted to be in New York City anyway, and like maybe whether or not he could find our train partners, but like t- check the dude's Instagram, right? That dude wants to be an icon. He wants like a sporting icon, not just wrestling. He wants to be a huge star in the world. Um, sure. I, I to to Christian's point, it is so that to me is probably the most interesting part of it because it's like when you when we talk about all these different issues, um, right? Like how many times have we had an argument in this office about like public private school and, and all the stuff that goes on in high school. Right. And it's like, is it bad or is it good? Like if a, if a private school sucks, um, they, they suck, but then all of a sudden, you know, they get kids and they're, they're recruiting, then then all of a sudden becomes an issue. So like, is it inherently good or is it inherently bad? Um, again, there's, there, there's going to be some consideration about how good the other person is. Then we have the question of in general, is it going to benefit America more to have, for like lack of a better term, open borders when it comes to, to letting people train here? Because like, how many of them are gonna, how many of them are going to become Americans and train and compete for America? And how many coaches from America were foreigners that that now want to go over here? I mean, it, for the women, like Tadaki Hada's dad used to run the Japanese Wrestling Federation. Like, that was a huge. Uh, get for for american women's wrestling to have tadaki hada here and and the list goes on valentin kalika is not from america right so um america benefits from 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 this too and i don't know me me, like me personally you you guys know this like i i so hard defend like the individual choice of an athlete or a coach or whomever like if you're going to get paid money or i'm going to pay you money to train and compete wherever um like I don't really take issue with it, and I guess that's easier in a sport like soccer, where it's all like clubs, right, as opposed to wrestling, where you're it's it's all country based. Um, so like I'm I'm just not gonna take issue with it at all, like literally at all. But again, if Jordan or or anyone in America who's like actually competing and training against the guy takes issue with it, like I can totally wrap I, my head around that. Like that I that know, makes a lot I of find, sense. Where I find fault, where I find fault with people that defend it is not listen if you think if you they're they're not accurately portraying right andy's andy's response to christian was not an, an accurate portrayal if andy wants to say it's cool for a, a united states money to fund the development of foreign athletes i disagree 
but that's his right to feel that way. Where I, where I take issue with Andy is, and other people, is portraying it wrongly, is, is saying, he, you know, people, everybody trains in Jag- Dagestan. Agul came over here, not apples to apples, guys. I disagree a little bit with the Agul thing. He's not just here for a week training camp. Yeah. He, he was here the entire month of February and then is going to be uh, in Columbus for 20 days in August. Yeah. That, but that is ask, Kyle Snyder training with uh, Nick, Nick Gwizdowski's biggest threat to win a world title. Okay. Uh, yeah. I mean, fair point. Fair point. Now, but let me ask. What if Gwiz, what if Gwiz brought in Sajalayev for for ask, 50 days? For 50 days. Fair point. Fair point. Now, let me ask you, who's funding that? Is a high RTC funding that? I would assume. Well, I don't so. know, but but certainly they're. I mean, I would. I'm sure they're involved. Yeah. That that is a part. That is like a big part of the question, though, because if Aqua is doing this on his own dime, then it's more. It's like time as opposed to just raw resources if ohio rtc is footing the whole bill for him to come over here oh well, then certainly they're little... certainly they're footing a portion of it but that's what i'm saying right that but that that, that gets more into that, that that's part of the nuance of this is like okay my myc rtc is there's money from american pockets going into a foreign wrestler and, and as we've stated ad nauseum a foreign wrestler that is a legitimate threat to americans the difference we may see with Agul right now is that we don't view it, it, that probably doesn't bother us as much right now because we don't view Gwiz we don't view as, Gwiz Gwiz as Agul's peer at this yeah. point. But but like I mean, if you're Gwiz, your teammate is training with the number one guy in the world. I'm like, what the heck, man? Unless what is going on? Is this a mole situation where he's <laughs> getting information for Gwiz funneling it? Well, if if that's the way it is, I'm fine with it. Okay. And he's funneling all but the information to But he never admit that. He's got to keep that. Right. That he's got to keep that, that under wraps. That was like one of the first things that kind of happened on the forums when this started happening. Is like, well, maybe Snyder's giving information. I think it's just like Snyder's the best in the world, and he wants to train with the best in the world. And like the some of some some of these guys don't think much be, like beyond. Is this helping or hurting other countries? It's just like, is this is this going to help me become the best wrestler that I can be? And, hey, and there should there should yeah. certainly be considerations for I, for, I agree. for the team. That's a but good, like, that's if a... Snyder wants to do it, like I don't know. I just I don't, I, again, like for, for me, it all goes back to like individual choice. And if if it helps or hurts people, like that's just gonna be the fallout from things. Good segue in that in what you're saying. You're saying Kyle Snyder's the best in the world because. Jordan Burroughs loses to Frank Chimizo, who's amazing. And wrestling people are like, ah, you know, it's just maybe it's not the same Jordan Burroughs. He's going to have a tough time. And Kyle Snyder loses to a guy that's not even close to Chimizo's level. And people are like, eh, it's just Kyle. Just I, Kyle, he's fine. I don't think many people take your Burroughs perspective personally. I th- I, I didn't see that. I certainly don't feel that way. I don't think many do. I think people were like, man, dude, Jordan's I, – I, after Beat the Streets and after World Team Trials, I'm like, Jordan is at as high a level as he's been. He's maintained his peak. I, th- I believe that at least. I thought around 2016 and then the World Cup in 20 – I guess the World Cup was in 2016. I think it was before um, the year change. I, I thought there was a difference in Jordan, but now I think he's all the way back. And But you are right in that we're just – I, until we see Kyle lose at Worlds, I don't think we're we're gonna re, react or overreact to these losses, right? Um, he's lost to Alborov before, lost to him again. He lost to Tahan before, lost to Kadzi before. He's, he loses to guys that are not on his level, and um, yeah. you know he lost to Kuhn, and he beat him twice. I just think he just has a, a unique ability right now to raise his level so much, and I think it should help us appreciate Burroughs all the more. Is that? He really never has these losses out out of season. It's ha- happened at Yasudogu once, and it happened here, uh, at Yasudogu again. But really, all his losses were he you know, lost to Sargush. He had the two losses other, at the Olympics and Dake. Yeah, other he than the Olympics, fewer than one loss per year. Yeah, on it, like other on an international Olympics, schedule. <sighs> Crazy. Other than the Olympics, he never Jordan never really had a bad performance. Maybe the Marable loss, but like, okay, he loses ten ten to Chimizo. So what? Right, he loses to Sargush on a bum wheel. So what? Um, he, I, he hasn't had the the results like 
Alvarov lost, Odikadze lost. I mean, good good guys, but they're no Chimizo and they're no, you know, they're not they're no Kyle Snyder. Yeah. No, it's true. It's true. And and you know, I don't know what we even make of it other than yeah, Kyle loses matches and that's just the way it is. And then Alvarov beat two Olympic champions. This, this weekend, Kyle he beat two loses. Olympic champions. What can you say? Kyle, Kyle loses, and we're all like, "Yeah, he'll get it when it matters." And it, I mean, for and three it, three years, that's what he's done. And he'll do it. Yeah. He's yeah. just he's training through this tournament, dude. He's yeah. he's not worried about Yasser Dogu. Yeah. So want to go through real quick, CP our lineup. Our lineup, how they did. Yeah. Thomas Gilman, once again, champion. Uh, Nomad, why do you not care? Why is this not important to you? Why do you hate Thomas Gilman? Yeah, can you explain how we shouldn't um, feel good about this? I would really have liked to have seen the Atley footage because um, that was the match. Like, when when you look at the bracket, you're like, okay, that's a guy that he might have to go through again to get to where he needs to be. Um, Do you think he stopped clubbing guys hard? Is that why he won? I... I know I, that, I know that bothered you. They, it doesn't bother me. Like I like no, like dude, wrestle your style, but I just when when you do that, you are occasionally going to get hit for for there, there's going to be a caution in one occasionally and sometimes that caution in one may cost you a match at an important time. Mm-hmm. But again, like you should not fundamentally change who you are as a wrestler. It just I would, uh, you leave yourself open to possibly give up a question one. I'd like to see Thomas Gilman club you and see if you could stand up. After, yeah, like yeah, see uh, if you could take just, it. That would be great. Let's just see. Let's have a, 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 a Thomas Gilman challenge where <laughs> Thomas he, he's not even going to score. He's just we're going to see how many times he can club Nomad before Nomad just absolutely <laughs> crum- crumbles. Will Nomad should actually I, should will I, he do this? Should I take some clubs <laughs> from Caden Cooperman first though? Because he's been training. All right. You can't you can't tell jokes that nine people get. <laughs> That's those aren't funny jokes. Okay. You literally do did that like four shows in a row, by the way. All right. So next up, um Gilman. Any thoughts on that? Oh, I'm I'm just you know, Gilman, I'm very uh stock up, I think, on him. Okay. Stock up on Gilman. Nishan lost, and I think Nishan is is a wild card. He could yeah. he could get hot and do well. He could go zero and one, and you know, I, I don't know. We we saw him at, at Final X, and what does it mean to do that to Joe Cologne? We're not entirely sure at this point. Joe Cologne's good, but certainly not a world medalist at this point. Uh, yeah, Nishan's gonna be a wild card, as I think our next guy is Logan Stever. You know. If we get, I mean, look, match to match, look at his World Cup performance. You know, lose to right. the Japanese guy, he beats Aliyev. Who knows what we're going to get with Logan, right? Aliyev currently number one. Yeah, and he lost Rightfully so. He lost three months ago to, to Logan. So, yeah. who, who knows? He's a world champion. He's very credentialed. He's done great in the past, but I don't know what to make of it. I, I'm, I'm certainly not, um, I'm not bullish. Yeah, I'm... Sixty one sixty five definitely um concerned. I now mean, look. James Yeah. James, you know, it's another one of those situations in my opinion that it's Kyle kinda like Kyle Snyder. I mean, you know, James Green isn't Kyle Snyder, but I also Kyle loses three three, I'm like, eh, no 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 room to I mean there's no reason to panic. James loses to a guy. I don't think there's any reason. That was just – he just blew it. He was way better than that guy. Well, just, I, I think it's good that it happened because I, me too. I, I felt like in a couple of his matches, he'll get a lead and then he won't step on the gas. I mean, he did it against Chamberlain. He did mm-hmm. it there, – there were many times – and he did it at Worlds last year. I think he did it at World Cup where he is evading late instead of building his lead. And he should be building his lead. That guy wasn't, to me, that guy wasn't in his galaxy and and, and, and James knew it. Yeah. And he wasn't. And I don't think he loses it to, to that guy again. And, um, I, you know, it's easy to say continue to attack. It's like such a simple thing to say. But I, I think for him it, it'll, you know, that's going to behoove him. He's better than these guys. The more exchanges he forces – the better he's going to do, period. The the concerning thing for, um, like, the three things that just that we just talked about, like, three guys we just talked about, 
is that the the way international set up with repechage is like this is gonna sound stupid, but you can't take bad losses because mm-hmm. that just you right. go from no, that's right. You go from um, so a bronze medal now is worth fifteen. So you go from fifteen potentially to you know or to twenty twenty five if you make finals to zero because it's like well there's no way that guy's gonna make the finals. And I'll tell you another. You're right, no man. You're absolutely right. Um, I'll tell you another thing in James' situation is he has no he has no seeding points. Yeah. Very. I mean, he didn't get points at Dogu. He didn't did he, he didn't wrestle Pan Ams, right? No. Um he's 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 probably going to hit he he has the risk of hitting some hammers early. We it's very possible that like we only get one or two seeds. Uh, because of because of no Kyle Medved will still. David will David uh, will David will basically definitely quiz quiz is really likely Gilman potentially and then everybody else I mean we barely have any other seeds as it is every, and then because That's of why Medved like pff, we might not have any seeds or very few I mean, at least to me, to me we the whole to me all our ones or suspected ones should go to Pan Am's it's like a I don't want to say it's a well, gift. Well, the thing is, they weren't ones when Pan Ams happened. I know, but Jordan Burroughs is. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I just – I think Jordan – I think a lot of these – here's the here's the bottom line. If they cared about seeds, they would go and get seeded. They don't care about getting seeded at all. Yeah. Because until Russia cares strongly about getting until everyone cares about it, it doesn't help. And so many don't yeah, care. Yeah. It's not worth disrupting your training to go to Pan Ams and do all that thing to them. Uh, yeah. So, but now, I will say this: Shouldn't you shoot for the? You should shoot for the one seed because it's so often it's a smaller bracket. Yeah. So that's yeah. so that's the thing. The the the, the way the seeding system is is set up, and and I I do believe that they're going to continue to to make changes to it. Um, and I think maybe there was more pushback than I thought there was going to be originally, like with other countries. Anyway, um, right. The, the the thing with the one seed now, it doesn't prevent you like. Kyle Snyder can be the one seed, and Sedge Live is not going to be seeded, right? So he could still hit him first round or before the finals. Yeah, yeah that's, that's but, what Christian saying. But I'll tell you what else messes it up, Nomad, is that because the weights changed, now last year's worlds don't take account. If last year's worlds took account, then we might see some guys like Burroughs chase the <laughs> one seed because they have a they have more of a shot at it, right? They had they get they would get points from last year's worlds, and you do well to Dogu. Now you're in the running for one or two, but because last year's world championships points don't count, you almost have to do everything in every tournament to get it. But here's the thing: now they're not going to count for, and this is what next year is going to be fascinating because the the right before the Olympic year. But like, they're not going to count for next year either. That's the well, thing. The 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 crazy thing. Like I, I've given you a lot of benefit of the doubt on 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 the seeding point stuff, but the, the the one thing I can't get on board with is that the the way next year is going to work is at the start of the year, certain people are going to have a few points. I'm talking like ten or less, based wait, wait, on the wait, wait. entire year's body of work. Meaning, okay, so you look at David Taylor, right? David Taylor right now has second most points at 86. He has 62 points, and we assume he's going to get a medal. Um, you know, based on how he's done the show, we assume he's going to get a medal and hopefully a gold one at the World Championships. So David Taylor will very likely end up as in the top three for the whole year of points, um, kind of no matter what happens the rest of the way. But all that's going to do is give him, like, five points going into next year. And, and I need to look no, up no, the no, exact no. amount. You're telling me that for 2019 you're not going to get points from Worlds? You... It's not about points from worlds. It's about your entire year's body of work, and ending the year number one gets you a few points going into 2019. No, I don't think. Uh, that's that's the case, and 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 um, I I'll look into it more and, and kind of have specifics no, you for get the next like time because I don't want to derail this. Let's get let's get into date. We got but half the lineup yeah. yet. We've got a long ways to go. But let's at some point, I want to have that conversation. Got it. But yeah, we'll get Dake, to that. Dake wins it, dominant throughout. Um, same story for Taylor. Oh my uh, God, Taylor! Just, Who picked people the way that these guys are doing it? I don't know. 
That's I mean, you saw Daniel Cormier tweets it. Daked. <laughs> he's like, guys, I wrestled international. You know, he's a world medalist. He's like, years. He's like, I don't know if I pinned that many people my entire career. Right? You guys just did it at Dogu. It's, it's amazing. It's amazing. And and one quick point about that. The only thing that sucks about that is like because we feel so strongly they're gonna medal, it's not gonna help our point totals because um, freestyle is just based on placement, and it only matters if you're not in a medal match. Which again is a whole separate ish, like it's argument I don't crap. want to get into right now um, that we sure. can talk about at some point. But like that's the only thing that sucks about how uh, like it, it's it's basically not gonna help us at all at worlds. But like right, by all means, please or, keep but, kicking butt. But just just by sheer, you know, performance, it's like these dudes are just dominant. These dudes are just balling up world ranked guys. Yep. Yeah. It's uh I mean he pinned he pinned a dude that beat Jaden. Yeah. Annihilated him. Da- David Taylor that is. McCoyev is the guy that Jaden lost to in the semis. Mm-hmm. Golden Goosegate, uh, as we've affectionately called it, and David just annihilates this guy. And listen, <laughs> there's two. There's Don't two. Don't get space started on it. There's two you guys. On a golden, it's a goose egg on a golden platter. Yes, it was served up, and so David smashes. It's two guys at that weight, okay? And uh, Tori Blanca Caralta is going to make things difficult for David. He won't. He maybe won't cradle him and pin him, but he will beat him the next time. It's Yazdana Chirati and David Taylor, and I can't wait. That match will happen. <laughs> In Budapest, Hungary. Dude, we are in July, almost so much July, but uh, go. Who you got, Charati or David? David. Because I, I got David. David. I got David for the simple fact that um, I don't think that the United States of America coaching staff, I don't think that the Penn State Nittany Lion Wrestling Club coaching staff, I don't think that David Taylor is going to be overcome by one technique of underhooks. Uh, yeah, I I agree. It is it is going to be insane. So here's how I look at that match. If you remember their match at the World Cup, he has Dana Trotti almost teched him. He almost had the, the cautions, right? And then David just kept coming, and then he, has, he died. He has Dana Trotti RIP'd right there. And it was awesome. In, in Iran, it was I freaking amazing, right? Breaks him. Literally broke him. Pinned him, okay? Now, so everyone says, all right, yes, Dan Trotty adjusting to the weight, da da da. He adjusts the weight and he wins worlds going away at, at 86 kilograms. You say, okay, he's adjusted, he's doing better now. But so, yeah, I will, I will concede that yes, Dan Trotty is better now. But David Taylor has jumped levels since pinning that guy. He is way better than he was before. So I think that has to be factored in. And um, yeah, I'll, I'll stick with David until, until he loses to that guy. But that guy has a – I always worry about guys who have a style that you cannot possibly replicate. You cannot replicate what Yazdana Tarati does. No one wrestles with that pace, that pressure, and is that good from the underhook position. Do you think that Reese Humphrey <clears throat> had never wrestled out of that underhook position before? He never felt anything like that, what that Iranian put on him in 2013. There's just something that they can do that we cannot replicate. He knew what was coming, and it still happened. So sure. there's still a part of me that is that is health, you know, a little paranoid about that. Sure, sure. I mean, you can, right? There's you can scout them, you can you can mo- uh, mock them in practice, uh, but it's still not the same as wrestling. The best in the game to have that attribute and then that style. You're you're 100 right. I just don't think that. Uh, they're gonna let that one thing work against them, and and I think David's a little bit too diverse. And uh, I, I'm maybe I'm maybe that's the American bias in me, but I'll take David. Yeah, I I really don't want to get into this because this match like hurts my brain because yeah, I I won't really want to take like, 20 <laughs> minutes to talk about this because it's so fascinating and there's a whole bunch of different things that play into it. But I'm gonna say this: I don't know that I've ever been more excited and had more confidence in a wrestler going into their first world championships than I've having David Taylor right now. Are you going to shake a lot of refs' hands, you think, before that match happens? I, I won't have any refs' hands to shake. I'll probably be at, at, at Space House just hanging out. Okay. I don't know what that means. Um, be watching, it means watch- I'll be watching Worlds at Space. Okay. Yeah. Party at Space House. All right. <laughs> Jaden Cox lost, uh, did not place. Jaden, I, I think we can. We need to plow through these next couple. 
quicker. Uh, Jaden, he's going to be in a lot of close matches because his style, he doesn't attack at a high rate yet, um, as high rate as maybe we would like to see him do, as we believe he could. Um, and anytime you're in matches like that, these guys are slick. He got a bad call and he lost the match. And that's going to be the nature of Jaden. He's going to lose some close matches, but he's going to be in every match, and he's a threat to win. I still think he's just as much a threat to win Worlds now as he was then. I think he's a threat to get a medal again, but until you are putting distance between you and other guys, you're going to lose matches like this. Yep. Kyle Snyder, we kind of touched on him. Lost to Alvarov, really good guy that beat two Olympic champions this tournament. He is to be respected. We respect you, Alvarov, um, but you will not beat him, so enjoy your Yasudogu belt. Whatever you got, all the accoutrements, you will not beat him again. Tiny Turkish car. Cer certainly not at the world. Yes, a Turkish smart car. Gwiz <laughs> got bronze. Um, late score to get bronze, late exposure. Clutch from Gwiz, and feel great about him getting a medal. I don't think he's entered that Agul Petrishvili tier yet, but I think he's um, towards the top of that next tier and uh, should medal again. What, what we've... What we've Basically, from, from Gwiz, one thing about Gwiz, like, we see the same things basically over and over, and we, we, we have the, the data now to basically, it, it's really hard, like Christian said, to put him in that top tier. Um, he still loses some matches late in very weird ways, but he also wins matches late, as we saw in his bronze medal match. So um, I, I think Gwiz is basic. We, we have a pretty, we have a, a better read on Gwiz <coughs> than we have on a lot of guys on this team right now, which is that he can absolutely get his 10 or 15 points and be in that bronze medal match. Yes, yes indeed. Okay, uh, should we get to a couple questions before we depart? Yeah. Um, yes. Okay, I'm happy to do this. Thanos Brands, at not Tom, not Terry, <laughs> as RTCs grow, will more international wrestlers come and train, and how mad will all of us get if they beat our guy slash girl? Yes, and more. So you think we will see more? Absolutely. And they will beat us? And we will get mad. Yes, we will become absolutely. infuriated. Yeah, it's gonna be. It's but it, gonna it be will interesting. still be a net gain for America. Okay, I don't opinion. think. I don't know. Yeah, like, maybe I'm looking at it wrong. Maybe I shouldn't be upset that NYRTC puts up Chimizo, but I, I see a distinct difference between Columbus paying. Uh, Ohio State paying Agul to come here for a while and giving somebody a salary. Yeah. So it's just not unreasonable to be mad at it. Like I like I don't feel that way, but it's it's so very reasonable to to take issue with it, no matter how much of an issue you take with it. Like it's just one of those things. Yeah. Something to monitor. I'm pretty. It's it's a good thing I think in all that there's at least money. <laughs> To support these athletes, yeah, but there's a, there's definitely a cost. Would you consider Team USA's performance at the tournament one a disappointment, two as expected, or three great? It was not great. I wouldn't even say it was as expected. I think it was somewhere between as expected to slightly left towards disappointment. I think it's you, you, you want to see something good with Nishan, a little little flash. I mean, any time our, our two best guys lost. Okay, that's. That's disappointing, yeah. right? And and I'm not overreacting to it, but I can't say, oh, it went as expected, or oh, this went great. Uh, I'm slightly disappointed that guys that good lost. We had three world champions lose. I have had <laughs> a lot of That's doubt. That's a, you know. I've had a lot of doubt about our ability to repeat for a long time. Shame on you. Because I know. you hate America. Because yes. I hate America. Yes. And this just added one more little annoying ping of a brain cell in the back of my head that we're not going to do You and Spay both. I want it on record. You and Spay are not picking us to go back and back. Yeah. Back to back. I I think it's like slightly slightly disappointed, but I'm not in panic by any situation. I'm not, go, I'm not going to Nomad's extent. I think it was a solid performance, right? You're going to... I mean, Logan, for all his peaks and valleys, he lost a nice back off. Yeah. What's his name? I mean, he's not bad. No, he's back off yet. Very good. Right. Uh, uh, you know, Snyder, I don't think should lose. I would like to see Nishan win one or two. I, I mean, that's the nature of international reference. Really tough. I think it was a solid performance. I think it was a really solid performance. A um, little bit disappointing in some regards. But valuable experience nonetheless. Um, yep. 
Who is least likely? Well, that's a stupid question, John Reen. I'm not even answering that. <laughs> Who is least likely to remember Snader, JB, or Cox? Well, probably Jaden. Get what a come on. We Did give, you we see give John Reen too much? Exercise? Hold on, he had a second question we didn't put in here. Yeah, is well, uh, well, Oklahoma State be top ten. I bet it was. No, he asked if Oklahoma State would outplay South Dakota State in <laughs> the NCAA. <laughs> what a jerk! Oh man. <laughs> Okay, follow up. What do you want to see more? John Reenan's face when the Cowboys get a trophy or Wade Chalice when USA Wrestling wins back to back worlds under our current RTC program? Well, I, I can, I'll answer that one. Uh, see, John is being ridiculous and he knows he's, he's being trolling. He's, yeah, he's trolling. Extremely. Wade Chalice is an insane person. <laughs> <laughs> Extremely. <laughs> do you remember his math? After the, oh my gosh, when he was like, Basically, oh my, never mind. I can't even, we'll, we'll pull it up for the next show because Shallus Math needs at least 30 minutes to be explained. Um, Didn't he, yeah, he said something like, we only, the United States only got like seven medals out of 80. Like, we don't have 80 competitors. We can only win 10. <laughs> we can only win eight. Yeah, the best you could ever do is 10 out of, what, uh, 40, right? Yeah, whatever yeah. he said was... <laughs> 25% is the absolute most you can, like, it's, it was horrible. Horrible take. Um, we used so, to win 30%. But wait, the Dude. answer, I would rather see Wade Chalice win USA Wrestling wins back-to-back -back worlds. Same. Because I like America a whole heck of a lot, and it was just hilarious. He thinks there's, like, the, our system's broken or whatever. Um, yeah, real broken. Okay, any other questions I missed that you think we were really, well, okay, I will say, I want to acknowledge Tanner Lefevre, who really wants us, <laughs> he really Good wants, you. he really wants us to do, and I want to so badly do an Iowa-Penn State whiteboard war, where there was no room for it today, we had Col Coleman Scott on, and then we had to get these Chimizo Burroughs takes off, and it, it's going to be, we're going to need 20, 25 minutes to fully pontificate about um, Iowa-Penn State. Maybe so, the pontiff himself will be involved. Unlikely. We can try. Um, so, yeah, we do want to do that. We do want to do that badly. Uh, any other questions I missed, guys? Oh, no, this is a great one. If David Taylor beats Yes Danny, where is he in pound for pound? Because uh, Izzy, our boy Izzy Styles says David Taylor is pound for pound the best wrestler in the world right now. Okay? And uh, he knows some wrestling. It's, it's not an unreasonable take. Um, so here's the thing. Right now, and possibly even after the Snyder loss, Sebs Live is – one and the low seeding goes two. Um, so Sagalai is still going to be top two. Mm -hmm. Snyder one to three based on if he wins or gets second. And then that rest, the winner of Yes, Nine Trout, David Taylor should probably be about three or four. Again, what I guess, I guess depending on. I, there's so many variables, but like Wait, D T D T of... no, top five. Yeah. Right, that, that's what, what I was about to say. The winner Burroughs Chimizo is also going to be up there. So, but one thing Burroughs kind of mentioned, it, it, he didn't say he was kind of, but he kind of made a mention at the Beach the Streets interview about how Flo says Kyle Snyder is the number one pound for pound guy. Yeah. Or, meaning, uh, guys, I'm still here. And I, yeah. I, I wonder if he if he wins and he beats a, a, a two time world champion in Chimizo, can he j jump to, the, to back to the top of the line where he was going into Rio 2016? I place a lot, I place a lot of value in consecutive medals. Mm -hmm. um, which Burroughs did and has done. Um, I, I don't know. Pound for pound is like one of those goofy things. Um, and, and Burroughs is so hyper competitive and should be because he's, it's why he's amazing. Um, but like, I'm still well, gonna count, have Snyder listen, above if you him, take, probably even if he wins. If you take a, uh, if you take a window and I know pound for pound is hard because you, you know, how far do you go back? Right. Exactly. Do you go back and say, well, well, Burroughs lost to Abdurrahmanov. Do you go back that far? You do take the last. You take the last two years after Worlds, say, and say, well, the last two years Burroughs has one loss, and that's to Chimizo. Um, I, I think, I think where you cut that off is is uh, determines what your pound for pound looks like because yes. you know Snyder has a loss to Alvarov, uh, Chimizo has a loss to Burroughs and. Gazi Mike made off and he lost to Yasser. Yeah. Oh, wait, hold on. Are we uh, talking about you said Chimizo, right? Uh, Demer Demertas. Oh, Demertas. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Yasser's the eighty-six. Um, yeah, I, I think the only clear-cut number one will be if Sajulayev wins Worlds. Right. 
That's the only – because even Snyder, Snyder at this point, when you lose to Albrow, when you have, have all these losses, it's tough to put him at number one even if you beat Sajulayev again. Sajulayev wins one, 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 two, one with one loss. And, and with to a, Snyder. And with a win over the former number one. Right. Right. I think that would put Sajulayev back in the number one spot. But he's, here's the problem, buddy. You're not going to win. You're not going to beat and, Snyder. Yeah. A, you're not going to win. <laughs> and B, Christian, it's like you always take a – you often take offense or take umbrage with the fact that some of these guys out here in the streets, Kyle Snyder wrestles and everything. Where's Sedge Alive? Where you at? Where you at, you dog? Didn't even, you didn't hey, even go to. I know where he was. There. He was at Euregan hiding down in 92. Yeah. <laughs> Coward. Kyle Snyder. Coward. He came to your oh, country, man. dog. Coward. Kyle, Kyle and JB <laughs> have no problem being like, hey, man. Kyle Snyder's like, I, I was in Iran. Uh, waiting for you guys, Donnie. I was in Russia waiting for Sajulayev. Um, you best believe if they come to my country, we're going to be scrapping. Come come in and do his weight. Sajulayev. Sajulayev's going 97. Russian Nationals. That's coming up this week. He's wrestling there. And um, I'm, go- s- I- I'm pumped. I'm still... Zadik is... Um, Coach Zadik is Woke. one of the most thoughtful yes he's like one of the most thoughtful <laughs> coaches in terms of like thinking about every possible thing that could happen and he is still very at least last time i talked to him still very like yeah i'll believe that he's going 97 when he shows up and weighs in 97 i think he's going 97 Kyle was too after final x yeah he was like i'll believe it when i see it but if he goes it for nationals that that's it no i think so they're no. not gonna let him change weights they're letting Rashid. they're letting they will let them Man. do whatever they want. That's Russian true. Nationals, Russia does what we please. Russian Nationals is so crazy. They they gave Rashidov and Beck Bulatov a release to not have to wrestle. They may let Rashidov wrestle 65 and then have a later wrestle off at 61 or, or go to another tournament like Medved or something. That's fair. And they gave <laughs> the fact that they gave Beck Bulatov a release blows my mind because they've never even let him go to Worlds. And yeah. he's won Uregan and he's won Russian Nationals and he's gotten screwed at Russian Nationals. Like, they yeah. gave him a release basically <laughs> for winning games. Yeah, they'll give him a release so that later on they can say, no, you're not on the team. Here's the thing. Yeah. You're, you're talking about these guys. They're they're good guys. They're fringe guys. This is the best wrestler in the world, first or second best wrestler in the yeah. world right now. He's gonna If he wants to go 97, he's going to go 97, and they're not going to – I don't think they have the power over him to say no. I hope it's I have No, but I, I, the same thing applies, I think, Christian. If he wants to go 92, I think they can't say no. Oh, true. Well, yeah. Now, here's the thing: if he loses at 97 to Batsayev, they should he go 92. They yeah. should let him go 92. That yeah. would be stupid if they didn't, right? Um, I love this for for the team race that they could have two potential. I mean, Batsayev could win worlds at 97, right? Batsayev is tough. Now, I mean, Snyder's beaten him, but yeah, those but, are hard matches. Yeah, but here's the thing: what if Batsayev could beat Sejalayev, and the Russian Federation will say? Sedge Live's going 97 anyway. When's, yeah. the, la- oh, yeah, sure. when's the last time that happened? I know. I, I feel like we always say that happens, but it doesn't really. I'm, now, they, they will. That's why they rig Russian Nationals for Lebedev, right? They rig it so it's like, oh, he won the thing, but he, yeah, you know, they rigged it. Well, what I'm saying to Christian is I, that does get played out too much that they just do whatever they want, but they always could. I don't know that I've ever written an article about it. I know that I've done the research before because um, I got an argument with Christian about it. So I think maybe after this weekend, after Russian Nationals, would be a good time to re-earth that, um, that research that I did and be like, okay, how often does this actually happen? It's ex- extremely rare. Remember, right. remember Sargush didn't win in 2013, and they sent that bum who, went, who lost to a, uh, the Indian guy in round one and DMP'd. So they, I mean, they, they do it. They, they sent the worst wrestlers sometimes. And historically— I mean, Lebedev was the worst wrestler at 57. And historically, they, they, the year <laughs> after the Olympics, they seem to have the biggest—they the, the, make the most errors the year after the Olympics, it seems. I w- well, I don't know what errors means, but they, they send the Russian Nationals winner, like 20, is my point. No, no, I know, I know. But 20—right. T- <clears throat> what I'm saying is um, make the most errors in terms of, like— Maybe they should not always send the Russian Nationals winner because we talk about so much as though it happens all the time, but it really doesn't. But it is more frequent to happen the year after the Olympics. That's when they seem to be the most um, prone to lose. I look forward to your data. Twenty thirteen happened in twenty seventeen. So yeah, I'm gonna get some. I'm gonna get some data on this, and I'm sure we're gonna have some stuff about Russian Nationals um, prior to it happening too. 
Speaking of data, shout out to ASICS. Thank you to ASICS for your sponsorship of Flow Wrestling Radio Live. It is 9.32 a.m. Central. Is it? Have we reached a good time to go? Yes. Well, excellent. Um, so our friends back there in the, what do you call it, Command Center, Nomad? I, I call it the Control Room. Control Room. I like Command Center. I also like Control Room. Uh, feel free to play the outro music as we prepare to depart. Um, thank you guys for listening. Thank you, Willie Saylor. For, for coming in thank you and also apologies to coleman scott that um we didn't get the full flavor of our conversation um we'll do it again we'll make sure either it's on the phone because that's easier or something else i don't know we don't have to work out the logistics in the outro necessarily but we want to have coach scott back on um stay tuned to flow Lots of great content coming out uh, very soon. NCAA going to be coming in hot and heavy yeah. in the next few weeks. Yeah, NCAA heavy. Get ready to eat. Um, okay, let's go play spike ball. See you guys. Mm.